Hi, I'm here today on the Thames Beach. Thames is a tidal river, so it has a low tide and a high tide. As you can see, it's about two hours after the low tide, so it's just beginning to come in again. would actually be out a lot further at low tide. And the Thames has lots of beaches. It has sandy beaches, it has muddy beaches, and it has stony beaches. London's in a sedimentary basin, like most of the south of England, so all the rocks are sedimentary. And one of the sedimentary rocks is, of course, flint. So you can actually get flint from the beach of the Thames, and that's what I've come down to look for. Amongst these stones, you will find small and medium sized flint nodules. But I'm going for a wander in search of flint. And we can see, get a lot of these. These are flint pebbles. A lot of the pebbles around here are actually made of flint. And unfortunately, it's generally a really poor quality flint in the pebbles. Sometimes you get some nice flint, but mostly it's pretty dreadful. You see this beach is stony, but it's also got quite a lot of mud on it. Hence the fact you've got the marina here, so all the boats can rest on the mud when the tide goes really far out. Used to be a lot more muddy. The mud would have come right up to that line there, but since they started running the uh, river boats or the river bus service, all the mud's being pushed out the Thames. This is because the, they got boats that were designed for ne Norwegian fjords that pushed downwards instead of sidewards with the engines, and you don't get many waves, but they were designed for super deep Norwegian fjords not a shallow river so they're pushing all the mud away from the Thames which is killing all the wildlife and making it impossible for marinas. Once upon a time the boats would have gone all the way up to here but they can't now because the mud's been taken away and it's all stone. You can see you find lots of stuff on the Thames. The Thames is just completely full of pottery. I know nothing about pottery but if you are a pottery collector, there's just loads of it. The other fine thing you find is glass. Glass in abundance, animal bones, but London's been around for two thousand hey, look at that. A dead mobile phone. London's been around for thousands of years, so there's the rubbish of the Romans, the Vikings, the Normans, Renaissance. And look at that. A brown flint nodule again. Far too small, but lots and lots of these pebbles are flint, but nothing sizable at the moment. If we look down there, you can see some big pebbles, and they will be flint pebbles. Here's one that's broken. That classic orangey red outside. That indicator is flint. Anything that goes that colour is flint. There, you can see it in the light. And this one's been chipped, so you can see it's flint inside. Again, nothing on the large side. I'm going to move up the beach a bit. One of the problems with being in a sedimentary basin is there's not a good supply of hammer stones or um, abrasion stones. Everything tends to be quite soft and not good at abrading. Okay, had a little bit of a wander around, quite literally, just around here within about 30 square feet, and this is what I picked up. You can get some small nodules. The Thames flint is beautifully black flint. It's actually much blacker than like Norfolk or Suffolk flint. But I found nothing particularly huge today. You can get medium sized nodules, they're rare, but generally if you walk around for a couple of hours you will get a medium sized nodule. But this is what you can pick up in five minutes. This one's quite large. Nice black flint. And you'll get, this is not a bad find. 
Maybe you have to walk about 10-15 minutes to find something this big, usually. So a bit lucky there. Some other nodules. This one's a nice one. It's been smashed so we can... All the cortex taken off. So we can see. Lovely. No... Uh, very few inclusions in Thames Flint. It tends to be pure black stuff. I couldn't find any big pebbles. That's unusual. Normally you find lots of big pebbles, sort of three or four times the size of this, but today's particularly bad. What happens with the river, as you can see the river, the river is tidal and it flows at about four knots, so it drags stuff down. All the stuff we find comes from upstream, and this flint falls in the river and is taken down to the sea. On almost a daily basis, what you find on the beach changes. The other thing is because a lot of the Thames beaches are stony, there's a bit, just seen that. <laughs> the flint gets smashed to pieces as it flows down the river. And I haven't found anything that good today. So we can see, look at all of that taken off, taken off. You'll find, there's a bulb of percussion there. And there's another flake off there, flake off there, flake off there big flake here. This obviously doesn't look remotely like a flint tool. But, if you wasn't coming down here a lot and you didn't realise that the flake, the flint gets naturally flaked by the river, you could definitely get fooled into believing this flint tool. I've been coming down here for years and I've actually found flint that's been naturally flaked by the river and making more impressive flint tools than some things you'll find on Paleolithic sites. I've found some pretty good impersonations of hand axes and such, all naturally created by the flow of the river, Four Knot River, and these bouncing for decades or hundreds of years in the stones. And you'd think that it was actually a prehistoric find. So, what are we going to take? I'm going to take this lump for sure. That lump, mm, I don't know, I could get an arrowhead out of that. And, a bit, bit weird in shape. Oh, look for a hammerstone. That's the problem, sedimentary basin, hammerstone. <laughs> Best stones around here are flint. <laughs> so they'll all break on it. So what I'm going to do is just go, leave that there for a minute. Oh, big nodule there. And I'm going to look up there. And this is part of the Thames flood defences. You get they put all of these um, large boulders up against the wall. I'm guessing it's to protect the seawall from the constant wear of the tide. As I said, Thames is a sedimentary basin. Look down there, and we got all of that chalk, all of these chalk pebbles and everything. But all of this rock here is either igneous are metamorphic. I don't know where it's come from. Britain's not like, or Europe is not like the US or Canada. You can't have those gigantic open quarries. There just isn't the space. In fact, quarrying igneous rock in Britain, I believe, is quite difficult because it's protected. There was, when they were building the National Library, the sculptor wanted some rocks from a Scottish mountain and they said he couldn't have the rocks from the Scottish mountain because they're protected. Here's another lump of flint. Good black flint. Look at that. Look at that flake off there. Like someone's taken a perfect flake for an arrowhead. But it was the river. Uh, so they said he couldn't have it. So a lot of the rocks in Europe come from Scandinavia. And you get, it's another good place to look because you get the flint caught up in the rocks and you get the flakes of the flint where it's smashed against the rocks. So it comes from Scandinavia and what they do is they go to a Norwegian fjord and they blast the cliff at the Norwegian fjord. It all falls into the river and they just bring a load of barges, dredge it out the river straight onto the barges. So this might be from Norway, I don't know. But as we can see, unfortunately it's dry, so it's difficult to see what the rock is. But I've been along before when it's wet, so I've got a pretty good idea. 
and the majority of it is basalt. Unfortunately, it's not nappable basalt. But the second most is down there. We've got a good bit of red showing, so we can see that's not basalt. And a lot of this rock is green, and it's layered. So it tends to be about 50% basalt, about 30% slate, and about 20% phyllite. But you get other rocks in there as well. Ooh, look at that lovely red rock. And I found big, big lumps of milky quartz. I mean, huge, as big as these boulders. I found diorite, I found granite. So there's a good mix of rocks in there. You also get a few minerals. I found a bit of calcite in there. But so far, no obsidian. What a bummer.